Good morning, and welcome to this candidate forum featuring candidates for Galt City Council. I'm Tricia Urhammer. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the moderator of this morning's forum. The City Council has two seats open, and voters are, will be able to choose two of the five candidates to move into those two open seats. This forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. The forum is being viewed live by an audience in the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors Chambers here in Sacramento and by a live cable television audience at home. It is also being taped for rebroadcast on Metro Cable Channel 14. You may see live streaming of this forum at www.sacmetrocable.tv. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization of both men and women established to promote political responsibility through informed and active participation of citizens. The League does not support, oppose, or evaluate candidates or political parties. Although our nonpartisanship policy does not permit endorsement of candidates or political parties, we do, after careful study, take positions on political issues. The format for today's forum will be as followed. Each candidate will make up to a one minute, 30 second opening statement. Next, the candidates will respond to questions from our expert media panel. The questions were submitted by the panelists and reviewed by the League of Women Voters. The candidates have not had any previous knowledge of these questions. Candidates will have one minute to respond each. And finally, they will each have a one minute closing statement time. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce the candidates for Galt City Council. And voters, remember you may choose two. To my far right, Mike McCune, Kelly Kagey. To my left, Kurt Campion. Good morning. Barbara Payne. Happy to be here. And Mike Hodge. I would also like to welcome our panelists asking the questions. Brian Gold from the Galt Herald. Good morning. Good morning. And Jared Goyette from Sacramento Press. Good morning. Now it is time to start with the opening questions. The candidates have drawn straws to determine the order to keep things on an equal plane. So Mike McCoon, if you would please begin. Thank you. Good morning or good evening, uh, citizens. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm thankful that the League of uh, Women Voters holds this so our, the candidates can get out there and reach the citizens and let them know exactly where we stand and how we support them. Uh, my name is Mike McCune. I've been in the, um, the Galt community for 10 years. I'm rooted in this community by my family and my children. My children go to Liberty High School, and what happens in the high school is extremely important to me. Um, I'm on several um, committees and I also volunteer. I volunteer as a Herald fire, uh, firefighter for the last seven years. I'm on the Human Service Coordinating Council for District 5, appointed by Don Natoli, Chair Don Natoli. Um, I'm on the Galt Public Safety Committee because that is extremely important to me. I'm on two ad hoc committees, one with emergency planning and evacuation, the other is uh, Assembly Bill 109. <clears throat> I, am, I wanted to reach the citizens today and tell them that uh, uh, you have a voice in your government. And as part of, your, uh, part of your government, you get to pick the people that you believe will best represent you. I am that person that will represent you aggressively and be outspoken. Please come to me. If you vote for me, you can come to me anytime, and I will address your concerns. I would like to thank you for this opportunity. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next, Kelly Kagi. Hi, my name is Kelly Kagi. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I believe strong leadership, a positive attitude, respect for others, and pride in the community are all attributes that I possess that will make me a qualified candidate for City Council. I am a businesswoman, senior account manager for BMD and Galt. I have 25 years of mortgage banking and corporate account management. My knowledge in finance and business will be a huge asset to our City Council. I understand the challenge of businesses in our community and how to balance a budget. I know the value of, ha of having a business-friendly environment which brings jobs to our community and keeps our tax dollars local. It would be my honor to serve on Galt City Council. I've lived in Galt for 20 years with my husband and two children. I've always been active in my children's schools and sports, having served on the PTA and volunteering at their sporting events and fundraisers. I am an active community member participating in the Adopt-A-Street program, Relay for Life, Neighborhood Watch and committee member for the Independence Day celebration and National Night Out. I have a real passion for our schools and I look forward to working with the school boards when I am elected. We need to bring Liberty Ranch into our city limits and understand the fiscal restrictions we have to overcome. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Kurt Campion. Thank you. My name is uh, Kurt Campion. I am running for Galt City Council. Uh, my desire to run for City Council is based on my passion for public service. It's who I am and what I have done for over 30 years, 26 of that for the City of Galt. I've been a resident of the City of Galt for over 20 years and genuinely care for the well-being success of this community. When my family moved there, uh, Galt had few economic resources. I've been directly involved in every major development that's occurred in that community in, in Galt uh, since that time. I believe that I've had positive changes. I've influenced positive changes in the community and was instrumental in the development of Galt's Industrial Park, the Save Mart Shopping Center, the Rayleigh Shopping Center, and most recently Walmart. All of these developments and many others have created jobs and revenue and needed services to the benefit of the residents of this community, which is the essence of economic and community prosperity. In addition, I bring practical experience, which includes already having served as a council member and mayor in another city. I'm extremely well versed in city budgets, administration, planning, and economic development. In conclusion, uh, I have always been and continue to be passionate about Galt. It's my home. My goal is to continue to build its economic base, keep the community safe, united, and continue to create programs that will benefit all age groups. I believe my education, my experience as an elected official, my passion for public service, and a comprehensive understanding of the city's operation make me an excellent candidate for a seat on the Galt City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Payne. I appreciate the opportunity to tell the voters why I am asking you to reelect me for a third term. First, I believe that it is important to show our citizens and businesses a consistency in a plan for the future. Second, I believe that accomplishments I have done in the past show that I have made a difference through hard work, accessibility for the people of Galt, and leadership. Those include a stronger and better law enforcement with youth programs as a priority, improve commuter transit, and through redevelopment, revitalize Old Town Galt, at the same time creating local jobs. We have worked with a partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, the city, and the schools for a better Galt, especially needed in these times. Also, working regionally with SACOG, Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District, First Five Advisory Committee, and other regional boards, I have brought a recognition of GALT to the region. There are plans for the future and I have been involved, that I have been involved in, and I want to ensure they will continue. Continue plans for economic development, better quality of life, unity of east and west sides of GALT. I believe I have made a difference and continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you. And final, the final opening statement, Mike Hodge. I would like to express my appreciation to the Sacramento uh, League of Women Voters for the opportunity to uh, give the community of Galt an opportunity to uh, know who I am. Uh, I am a, a very experienced uh, leader. I have uh, experience in the military. I'm a retired colonel. Um, I have two combat tours. 
uh, one in Vietnam and one in Desert Storm in 91. Uh, I'm also an experienced uh, manager from state government, retired. Uh, I spent the better part of my career working for the California Department of Justice. Uh, I finished my career working for the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation and the California Conservation Corps. But in addition to that, I'm also a small business owner. Uh, I'm a partner in a, a winery called Twisted Roots Wine located in Lodi. And then uh, finally, um, I have a lot of uh, service that I've given to the community. I was on the board of directors for the Habitat uh, for Humanity uh, in El Dorado County, and I served as a court appointed special advocate for El Dorado County as well. So I'm looking forward to being able to serve the citizens of Galta the capacity as the city councilman. Thank you. Thank you. We now turn to the question and answer portion of this forum. Brian, would you please direct the first question to Mike McCoon? Thank you and good morning. This first question deals with identity. Uh, wineries are more than just dots on a map in Lodi and Elk Grove uh, the city of Elk Grove appears to be focused on developing uh, its jobs based around the medical industry. Uh, what is one industry that Galt could and should strongly pursue provided it wants to produce a sizable number of jobs? Well, <clears throat> Brian, there's one that they can, we can do, the city of Galt can do, we can go to the industrial side if we want, and that could be manufacturing uh, for medical stuff if we want. Um, the vineyard is something that I have a strong point with. I have connections with uh, Napa Vineyards and up that way. Um, I think that if we embrace that, we're right here in Lodi, we're close to Lodi, we can actually uh, learn from uh, Napa and Lodi and start to establish great vineyards out there in Herald where I volunteer as a firefighter. There's a lot of vineyards going up out there and we should capitalize on that. So if we capitalize on that and uh, open wineries and uh, tastings in Galt, I believe that is one that will help bring jobs and um, money into our economy for Galt. Thank you. Kelly? Um, I feel I've worked for um, a building material distribu distributor in Galt. Um, we are one of Galt's largest employers. I feel um, if we are with our Galt business park, that's probably going to be our best option to bring the most jobs. Um, either like a call center environment type of of, um, of, of company or uh, like a distributor like us, um, that's going to be the most bang for a buck to get the most um, jobs in our town. We already have infrastructure set up at our Galt uh, Business Park. We need to focus more on identifying uh, companies and, and be more proactive in bringing them to Galt, uh, not just waiting for them to come to us. We need to be more proactive, make sure our infrastructure is in place, and then go out there and solicit them. Thank you. Kurt? Um, I believe that the city should promote its industrial park much more than it has in the past. Um, I, I was instrumental in its formation. This goes back some 15 years ago uh, when Air Products, the first major industry, came to Galt. Um, I think that it takes uh, leadership and the ability to connect with these industries to bring them to Galt. Uh, we have a, a very good base now, but I think we should build on it. Uh, air products, cardinal glass, consolidated fabricators uh, are just a few of the employers that we do currently have in the industrial park, and I think that uh, we need to continue to work uh, in creating additional uh, jobs uh, and increasing the revenue base uh, in, through the industrial park. That is probably uh, the best uh, uh, method at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara? Okay. Um, I believe that our location is important uh, to attract industry to Galt. Uh, we have a railroad, a railway system, a major railway system that goes right through our industrial park, and we do have an industrial park. But as far as identity for our town, I think we should capitalize on our agricultural industry. We are surrounded by all kinds of agriculture. We have the state FFA headquarters there. We have the most excellent FFA uh, program and ag program in, our, in both our high schools. Uh, I think there's a lot of possibilities there at a time when there is a need for food all over the globe and our proximity even to the port of, of Stockton is another advantage that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. 
Uh, I would agree that the industrial park is something that we really need to, to try to fill up with businesses, but we have a, a rather unique uh, problem. We have uh, approximately 48% Hispanic population in our community, and we also have somewhere around 30% of that population under the age of 18. And so when you look at the population, one of our big challenges is to try to match the type of industry that we can attract into Galt that will provide the most opportunity for employment. And so we need to really do some research in that area to do that. Thank you. Jared, would you please direct the next question to Kelly? Kelly, my question concerns the budget. Um, as you know, in recent years, Galt has been forced to dip into its reserves to meet its budget and, and has made uh, cuts, including layoffs. I want to know what you would do to keep the budget balanced and where specifically would you look for additional revenue or, or, or cuts? A uh, good question. Um, we are tapping into our reserves uh, more so than, than we should. We had next year's budget, we're tapping in about 300,000. What I would make sure we did when we did project our budget not to use income that's not guaranteed. Unfortunately, we did use uh, Walmart's income as far as their tax revenue, almost $750,000 worth of revenue for next year's budget. They were supposed to break down a few, uh, break ground a few months ago, opened by December. Unfortunately, that did not happen. So we are going to be very, we, we, we have to watch everything we do next year. Anything that's not a necessity, we, can, we are gonna have to hold off on it. Um, I would also look for the individual departments, maybe the employees that are actually doing the job, maybe can think of better ways of doing things, cut cost, maybe five, even if each department comes up with five or 10% five or Cost, you know, cost-cutting measures, that's gonna add up. So that's what I would work on. Thank you. Thank you. Kurt? Thank you. Um, I think first um, you would look, we would look, need to look at internal cost savings through efficiencies in terms of services provided. Um, I think also we need to look at the expenditures uh, and those should be based on need as well as cost. There should also be a prioritization of expenditures as well as um, uh, projects that are to be undertaken and the bottom line is I think that you need to keep in mind uh, what is the the best service for the least cost uh, through the entire budget process additionally I think um, we need to look at outside sources of revenue such as grants uh, grants uh, recently I uh, last year after I retired from the city I worked part-time and was the principal author in the $2 million grant, which the city uh, successfully was awarded by SACOG for the Central Galt uh, Complete Streets Grant Program. Uh, so those are the types of things I think we have to be creative. We need to look at other sources of revenue um, and also be very prudent in the expenditures. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara? Thank you. Well, we've had quite an experience with uh, the past uh, economy. And I think uh, what we've done has been very creative and uh, we've managed to balance our budget, but also continue to give really good services to our citizens. And I think that's uh, because of some of the creative uh, management uh, restructuring that we've done in our community. Also, I do think uh, we have opportunities to get revenue from grants and working with the regional boards like SACOG and some of those others we are able to capitalize on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Koch. Uh, yes, uh, obviously uh, grants are, could be a potential source of revenue, but the more important thing is to realize that a city exists really to provide primary services to its citizens, and those services generally begin with safety, public safety, and then to the infrastructures for maintaining uh, sewage, water, and, and things of that nature. So when you look at the budget, the, the biggest thing is to make sure that you've matched the expenditures of the budget to the areas where the need is the most critical. And so it would require a review and based, it would be based on a return on investment in terms of services. Thank you. Mike. Thank you. Um, we are dipping into our budget and we are going backwards, and that is a problem. 
we're not being smart financially with our city's budget. We need to look where we're going to have businesses develop in gold. We need to encourage them. And like one of the um, people set up here, the candidates, we need to go out and uh, aggressively seek these businesses. Grants is something that I've been saying from day one. We need to go out, look for grants, get some grants. I've done a few grants with the Herald Fire Department, but I've been to Wa or Sacramento, I'm sorry, not Sacramento, and talked with a couple of our elected officials up there on how we can get those. So, and public safety is a big issue. We sh and I don't agree with uh, the furloughs that we have right now, and I think we should uh, re look at that issue again, and uh, we need to uh, invest in our employees because they're an investment that we're making. And we have good services because they're here and they're dedicated. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, would you please direct the next question to Kurt? Governor Jerry Brown last weekend vetoed a series of bills that would have let cities, including Galt, retain at least some of its redevelopment money for various development projects. Instead, the redevelopment money will be pooled in Sacramento and dispersed as needed to other cities. Given the city's commitment to developing Old Town and using redevelopment dollars, what are your thoughts on the governor's decision? I think a number of the governor's decisions have been uh, adverse to cities, not just Galt. Um, and not just these decisions. I think the, the elimination of, of redevelopment statewide uh, was a mistake, um, and I think that that will um, hurt many economies, in, including Galt's. Speaking specifically to Galt, uh, Galt did sell bonds, redevelopment bonds, for some sp very specific projects in the city. Um, and they are very, very good projects in Old Town. One of them is potentially the theater bowling alley project and then some renovation along 4th Street. I think um, that the city should proceed with those. Those uh, will provide uh, additional uh, jobs. Uh, it will act to reinvigorate the Old Town and um, will provide additional revenue. Redevelopment um, has been uh, very beneficial to the city um, and can continue. Uh, as long as those bonds and the proceeds from the bonds are utilized in the method by which they were intended. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara? Thank you. Well, I could almost say ditto to what uh, Mr. Campion said. Uh, I think we do need to move ahead aggressively with our redevelopment uh, funds that we have through the bonds. And I think that uh, we have already started to make some improvements in Old Town, but to really capitalize those and get the best return on our investment, we need to move forward with it. Um, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen in the future coming down from the state as far as uh, their influence in taking of our, our funds, but in the meantime, we need to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Well, first of all, there's always been a running battle uh, in the eyes of people because many people feel that redevelopment funds were actually taken away from the, the general uh, fund expenditure categories and uh, it allowed for the diversion of money away from other issues. But redevelopment uh, is important uh, and we do need, in fact, to continue the redevelopment of the Old Town area. It provides us probably our best opportunity to not only attract businesses into the area that are of a retail nature, but also provides our citizens in Galt an opportunity to actually have some recreation and spend their hard-earned hard money in our town rather than going to Elk Grove or Lodi. So redevelopment is probably a thing of the past unless we have a drastic change in the legislature. But I would rather focus on actually developing the plan based on what we currently have, and that is just a, f a few dollars based in the bonds. Thank you. Mike McCoon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the redevelopment program, is uh, it's sad to see it go. I meant it was something that I believe cities uh, desperately needed, especially in this financial time. Um, but under the uh, current conditions, I, I respect the way it's happened and it's something that we have to deal with. I believe to uh, help out, we should have uh, put a lot of our redevelopment fund in, such as uh, help out with the water meter, because the water meters for housing is going to be an issue in the future. We also need to help out with uh, our current businesses. Our, uh, the current businesses that are in Galt, we need uh, redevelop money towards them to help them build their businesses or redo some of their storefronts and stuff like that. Um, I, it's sorry to see a, such a great program go away, but um, I think that we'll have to do better investments and then we'll have to look more into uh, 
our bonds and stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly? Thank you. Um, I believe that creating the uh, successor agency, this will allow us to continue to finish the redevelopment projects that we already had planned or are currently in progress. Um, I know as I walk the community, everyone is so excited about this entertainment complex, so i um, glad to see that we have the funding to still continue with that. Um, it is sad to see that the uh, governor did veto that bill as it does improve, it does eliminate the blight in the communities, and it does give you the opportunity to have the funding to um, enhance your those kind of areas. So I'm just glad to see that we were able to retain those funds and create that successor agency. Thank you. Thank you. Jared, would you please direct the next question to Barbara? Uh, Barbara, as one of the candidates alluded, the area around Galt has become increasingly diverse, particularly as migrant workers have come into the um, rural areas. This presents challenges. Um, what I'm curious as to, uh, what do you think the city can do to um, best serve this population and also uh, mitigate the, 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 the challenges, including um, as it affects schools? Uh, I'm not sure that I understand the question. Maybe you could uh, repeat it or clarify it a little bit, please. Yeah. There's, as Galt becomes more diverse, um, there's a, uh, presents challenges to the city. The question is how do you think the city can best serve in increasing, um, screen, an increased Hispanic population? Are, are you saying Hispanic operation? Hispanic, yes. Uh, Hispanic? Po population. How, what can the city do to better serve that Hispanic, segment of the population? Hispanic population. Well, I think that uh, one of the, the first things we can do is to um, start with the youth in the schools, and we do have some excellent um, opportunities for our Hispanic young people. Um, also, what I'm seeing is we have a Galt City Council Youth Committee made up of students from the high school. And I would say out of the 10 people, 10 students that sit on there, eight of them are Hispanic, and they show great leadership skills I think we need to invest in the future that they're going to uh, present for the Hispanic people, and I think we're on our way with that. Thank you. Mike? Yes. Um, the youth of the city uh, is important to me, and it's one of the major things that I want to accomplish in the city of Galt. Uh, I have on the, the Smart Voter website uh, a position paper. And what I would really like to see happen is I'd like to see a coalition develop to, first of all, bring together many different types of agencies, including government and faith-based organizations, as well as the Police Athletic League and the Boys and Girls Club, because one of our biggest challenges is to equip the, the young Hispanic population with the skills they need to compete in the workforce. And so in order to do that, we have to make sure that they are able to converse clearly in the uh, English language, that they learn computer skills, uh, and that they are competitive in the job market. So from my viewpoint, the biggest thing we can do for our population is to, in fact, equip them for employment. Thank you. Mike? Thank you. <clears throat> you mentioned the Hispanic uh, people in our community and I believe it's very important and sometimes to start out with that we have to start with their education the school libraries they're closing down we're rent running real short on our funds this is something that needs to be addressed and I mean addressed quickly this is something that will help them get the job skills as uh, one of the candidates said uh, computer skills they can learn this how can they perform something if they're not able to read the instructions for it that is something that I believe that will help our community and help them get more involved some of them have a language barrier. Reading the libraries, they have aids there that will help them. So I'm a big fan of getting these libraries back open and doing what we can by fundraisers. Also, uh, as I serve on the Human Service Coordinating Council, there's many programs there that will help, um, such as CalFresh and uh, the other programs on there, such as First Five and stuff like that. So I believe that would be, uh, those are some of the things that we should capitalize. And we, I need to get out there, and all of us need to get out there as elected people to get out there and. Uh, aggressively say, hey, you know, these are the opportunities out here and these are the places for you. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly? Thank you. Um, as far as the um, 
the Hispanic population, um, we do need to focus on the children that are English learners. Um, I do know that we do probably have programs in all the schools. We just need to make sure that there's no cuts on that. Um, the parks and recs programs, that will always be a priority. Uh, my children grew up playing sports, you know, soccer, baseball, t-ball. Um, my daughter was in cheer with the, the little football league. So that's important that we, that, we, that we remain focused on the youth programs, keep them off the streets, and just, you know, the camaraderie with the teams, um, I think will just enhance their personality skills and, and help them as they grow into leaders. Thank you. Thank you. Kurt? Thank you. Um, I, I agree with a, a lot of what has been said here with regards to uh, collaborative relationships with the schools and organizations uh, to help the youth in the community because I think that's um, where uh, education really needs to start and is most important and influential in, in an individual's life. Um, aside from that though, I think that we need to look at uh, economic development and job creation in the community in general. Um, many people uh, that uh, are born and raised in Galt end up moving from the community simply because of a lack of jobs. Um, I believe that uh, the city needs to really focus on job creation uh, and increased uh, revenue base uh, for the city and that will have spin-off effects uh, uh, to the balance of the population. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, um, the next question please address first to Mike Hodge. We're going to step away from policy for a second. Uh, at the forum earlier this week with the Galt District Chamber of Commerce and interviews with the Galt Herald and even here today, uh, a lot of you have given similar responses to the same questions. We've heard the term ditto and I agree with most of what's been said. Really though, what sets you apart from your other candidates? And really, why should the voters select you on election day? That's a good question. Uh, I believe that what you need to do is find out what mm -hmm. it is that the candidates are really passionate about. Uh, and I'm passionate about two things in particular. One is to get the city uh, of Galt to work with the um, Chamber of Commerce to develop a, a very strategic and active plan to draw businesses to the community. Uh, the second thing I'm very passionate about is that we need to do something for the youth. And I believe that the Galt uh, Youth Coalition uh, is something that's important and I have a plan for it. And if the uh, people of Galt vote me in, I'm going to pursue those two passions uh, with great vigor. Thank you. Mike? Thank you. Well, the one thing that sticks out for me is I'm outspoken. I don't go with the status quo. And my thing is I always look into it and I start asking the citizens, if we're going to vote on something, I go out into the community. I find out if there's a concern. How would you want to do this? One of the things if I elected to the city council is what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select a few people throughout the city to come out and uh, we'll meet like once a month and basically uh, go over top issues and stuff like that. They know that I don't take things for granted. I need evidence to support it. And if it doesn't make sense and if it's not what the citizens want, then I can't vote for it. So the citizens in Galt know that I am out there for them. I'm a very outspoken voice and I am not a status quo or go along or as they've deemed it now, the rubber stamp method. Thank you. Kelly? Thank you. Um, I work in Galt. I feel very fortunate to be able to work in town. Um, my passion will be to find more businesses that are willing to come here. We need to refocus our energy and update our website as far as economic development. Start being more proactive than reactive. Um, we have an economic development roadmap that we did back in 2008. It's full of great ideas. I took a highlighter and it's sticky and we just really need to refocus and go back to that. Um, also, I came from banking. I have uh, 25 years banking and corporate account management. I know how to balance a budget. I know how to cut costs. Even being a mom in today's economy, you, you have to cut costs. You have to look at brand names versus what's on sale. And, and you have to watch every dollar that you spend. And as your council member, I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Kurt? Thank you. Um, I, I believe I have a very unique um, background that, that, that qualifies me as a, as a as a candidate for, for council. I, in the past, have served as an elected official. I have been a mayor of a city um, early in my career. 
uh, for the past, over the past 25 years I've worked for the city of Galt. Uh, public service is what I have done for over 30 years. It's what I have a passion about. Galt is the community I live in and I am very passionate about it. I believe that I have uh, you know, not only the experience, I have the education, I have a master's degree, a master degree in, in planning. Um, and I can, you know, fr from day one, uh, after being elected, I would be ready to start the job. I would be informed and, and effective. Um, there are programs now that I think we need to think about um, in order to, again, and, and I, I really stress economic development because I think that's at the heart of, of a successful community. Um, we need to prepare ourselves, uh, prepare the community uh, for when uh, this economy starts to rebound. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara. Thank you. Um, what got me involved in politics in the very beginning was a belief that Old Town Galt was the only, well not the only, but the most unique thing. Uh, so that was, that was sort of me, was to revitalize Old Town Galt. But then after that I was out talking to the people and my other priority was to have an open door policy to the citizens. And uh, that's been very successful. I do get phone calls. I get individuals that will come to me with their own unique uh, problem or situation, and I've been able to follow up on it. And I think we've changed the whole atmosphere in Galt that we are now treating our citizens like their customers. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more question. And let's see, Jared, mm -hmm. if you will please direct that to Mike McComb. Mike, I'm going to keep it broad here, and this question concerns your, your vision, uh, sure. how you see the city. What do, you most, what do you most like about Galt as it is today, and what aspects would you most like to see changed or improved? Well, the thing I like about Galt is it's a small community. Um, i got to hand it to our police department. They've kept our crime down. Um, I show this. Uh, it's a concern by I'm on the Public Safety Committee, so that's something that I um, show, and I think that shows the citizens that how concerned I am. Um, what I what I want to bring to the city is businesses, and we need to be smart about where we're putting the businesses. Um, we need to uh, make it not just uh, uh, where it's downtown, but it's other places throughout the city is what I'm doing. We have uh, right now we have an ongoing uh, look into a possible roundhouse for the train station, and that's something that I would like the city to really look at because it's a landmark and it tells a lot about our city. Um, I guess I'm being a little unfair because I love trains. But uh, that is something that it would be a museum and it'd be something that would identify Galt and put us uh, even bigger on the map. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly? Uh, what I like best about Galt is what brought me here 20 years ago is our small town charm, our, our close-knit community. If there's a tragedy or if there's something that happens in our community, everyone pulls together. If they know that, that person or not, I. I that's what I like about the, the libraries. Everyone's pulling together, whether they have children in the, you know, children in the school district, um, community events, 4th of July, lighting of the night, national night out, anything that we have in this community that brings it together, that's what I like about Galt. People know people. You go to the grocery store, they know your name. They know if you want paper or plastic at the checks down. I mean, they get to know you. Um, as far as where we need improvement, I really think with Walmart not coming to uh, being built this um, this past couple months. Um, we really need to concentrate on our fiscal responsibility. We have a lot of room for improvement now, even without Walmart being built. And so next year, uh, we just really need to focus on what our needs are and what we have to have, absolutely have before, uh, before we waste any more money. Thank you. Kurt? Thank you. Um, uh, Galt uh, is, is a very uh, distinct community. Um, it, it, and when I say that, it has a very distinct urban boundary. Um, and I like that uh, compared to other communities because you, you don't know when you've left one community and you're in the next. When you leave Galt, you know you've left town. Um, and, and, I, and I think that's important because it gives a sense of identity uh, as a resident in that community. Um, I like Galt uh, for all of the public services that the, that the city provides. Um, it, it, it has excellent recreation programs and, and, and for our youth, um, I think that's extremely important. Um, in terms of public safety, uh, the police department, I believe, is, is excellent. Uh, the fire safety is excellent as well. 
and I think those are important things to the community and the residents of the community. To what I would do to improve it, again, uh, I would look at uh, job retention and new business growth uh, because I think the key to uh, a successful and prosperous community is having a good economic base. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara? Thank you. My vision for Galt is to continue to keep the small town atmosphere that we all love and that's why we're there, but also to be stable, have a stable economy so that we're not so affected by outside influences so we can continue to have the best parks and maintain them, um, that we can have all the programs in our schools that we want for them. Uh, that we can grow to a point where our small town businesses can succeed. Uh, and I think that goal is going to be about 35 to 40,000 uh, population. In order to, can, to keep the small town and keep it thriving, we need to uh, uh, have some growth. Thank you. And Mike. Well, Galt is a very friendly community. Uh, it is obviously an agriculturally based community, and so you definitely know when you leave the city limits of Galt. But it is a place where you can raise a family. Um, the police department has done a wonderful job in keeping the crime rate down and has actually reduced it. The police department has a very active crime prevention program uh, that in involves all of the children and all the schools at many different levels. So it's a, it's a very friendly place to, to live. The thing that I would like to see happen most in Galt is to bring in a business base so that we can actually increase the standard of living for the people that live in the community of Galt because they are um, struggling uh, because there are not a lot of jobs there. So we have to correct that. And the only way to do that is to bring businesses in so there's employment and that's what I'd like to see happen. Thank you. That concludes the question and answer portion of today's forum. We now move to closing statements. Mike McCoon. I thank you. Well, in closing, I, I would like to say, I feel the Galt citizens deserve to have their interests and their concerns addressed. I will, do my, I will do this by eliminating the closed doors policies and special meeting practices that we've seen in the past. I enjoy getting out in the community and dealing with the public and meeting with the citizens and the businesses. My involvement in the Galt Public Safety Committee has shown my dedication to the community and its safety. The Galt Police Department supports my candidacy. I am committed to two terms and only two terms of office and then moving on. I think this, is, this better serves the community and shows that I do not have an alternate agenda. The growth of the uh, Galt is critical as we move forward and I am well aware of what it takes to establish and start in becoming a business in Galt. My families have owned businesses and started uh, businesses locally and down south and one's even actually a corporation. I believe I have the resources and I have the ability and the knowledge to start businesses and bring them here to go. When you vote for me, if you select me as the candidate, you will find out that I come with a lot more than just myself. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly Keggy. Great, thank you. Uh, during these troubled economic times, our city must continue to look for creative and innovative ways to save money, eliminate wasteful spending, and increase revenue wherever possible without raising taxes or our fees. With my experience, I will ensure your tax dollars are spent responsibly. As your city council member, I pledge to be your voice in city government and be responsive to the concerns of the community. Public safety and both our senior and youth programs will remain a priority. I will work to continue on our path of economic development. We have the means to turn our economy around by our decision making. With the 20 years that I've lived here, I have experienced firsthand the years of economic prosperity and the downturn as many people have in our city. With your vote, I am the one who will move our community forward to prosper and thrive in today's challenging times. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kurt Campion. Thank you. I'd like to touch on a couple of issues that I believe are key. First is uh, economic development. Um, in anticipation of an improving economy, I think the city needs to reevaluate and reduce certain building fees to spur economic development in this community. Uh, it's critical that we address this to improve our local economy. We need to start building homes and buildings. Second, um, uh, so I have a couple of safety concerns. One deals with the uh, location and manning of the fire district. We have no permanent manning on the west side of the railroad 
uh, right of way. And I think that raises genuine safety concerns for residents on the west side of, of the city. Additionally, I believe the Liberty High School would be better served if it were annexed to the city of Galt, having the police department as the primary and first responder rather than the sheriffs. And third, I think the city needs to address vacant, the vacant bank-owned properties in the community. Uh, these properties need to be maintained like, our, like all the neighborhoods. Um, and the, the citizens should not be impacted by the negligence of the banks. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Payne. Thank you. We have gone through some tough times, and because this council, working in a partnership with the city manager and staff, we have, we have continued to have a balanced budget, improving services, law enforcement, and build confidence by the people in the direction the city is going. I hope the people will reelect me to help work for a future to continue the progress we are making with a positive attitude and the desire to improve economic stability, the quality of life, and always serve the people better. Thank you. Thank you. And Mike Hodge gets the final word. In uh, years past, the council has not worked together very effectively. Uh, the current council uh, are, are very good. They're working together as a team. And what I'll bring to the council, if elected, is some leadership and the ability to continue to do some team building with the city council. But in years past, the city staff and some of the people in the city actually created an environment in which businesses were actually discouraged from coming to Galt. And I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen and that we continue to become a city where businesses want to come and grow and people want to raise their families. So if I'm elected, that's what I'm going to do for the city of Galt. Thank you. On behalf of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission, I thank the candidates for coming and representing their views for the upcoming election for Galt City Council. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce to you to them one last time. To my far right, Mike McCoon. Thank you. Kelly Keggy. Thank you. Kurt Campion. Thank you. Barbara Payne. It's been a pleasure. And Mike Hodge. Thank you. I'd also like to thank our panelists today Brian Gold from Galt Herald. Thank you. And Jared Goyette from Sacramento Press. Thank you. Also, without the volunteers here today, this forum would not have been possible. So I would like to extend a thank you to all volunteers for helping. This forum has been designed to impart information to you, the voter, in accordance with our belief that a democratic government depends upon the informed and active participation of its citizens. We hope that the insights you gain today will help you cast an informed vote on November 6th. For voter information and rebroadcast times, please visit our Smart Voter website at www.smartvoter.org or the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County website at www.lwvsacramento.org. The League welcomes both women and men as members, and we believe it is where hands-on work to safeguard democracy really leads to civic improvement. So please remember to vote on November 6th. Remember. For Galt City Council, you may vote for two of the five candidates and help make this democracy work. Thank you.